Hi, Series Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain the second part of a science fiction drama television series called Under the Dome. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. After three days of being trapped inside the dome, the people of Chester's Mill start to lose their minds. Moreover, the soldiers appointed to guard the outside of the dome pack up and leave. This causes a riot that has to be stopped by the town's mortician Lester. He chants Bible verses and relates the disaster to the God's wrath that everyone from Chester's Mill should face. The people calm down, but with the town's resources running low, it is only a matter of time before they go wild. Suddenly, Linda falls unconscious and has to be rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, Angie is still locked inside the bunker. Junior comes to visit with clothes and food. Angie secretly brings out the scissors she hid yesterday and attacks him. But the attempt goes in vain when Junior swiftly dodges. He says that he loves her the most, but she has to stay in the bunker until she loves him back. When she is alone, Angie tries to bang on the pipelines on the wall. It causes a pipeline to break, filling the bunker with water. She falls off the bed in the process and passes out. Julia is still investigating her husband Peter's disappearance. She finds his car in front of DJ Phil's trailer and asks him about it. It turns out Peter sold the car to Phil right before the dome appeared. Phil also reveals he is friends with Barbie, which means Barbie has been lying about not knowing anyone in the town. Suddenly, Phil falls unconscious as Linda did earlier. He is rushed to the hospital where several people with similar problems have gathered. Joe and Nari are also at the hospital. Alice and Carolyn are worried about them after they had a seizure last night. Alice, being a doctor, volunteers to help around the hospital that lacks medical professionals. An epidemic has spread around the town, but the hospital runs out of masks and gloves and has a minimal supply of antibiotics. Still, Alice and the nurses try their best to help everyone. Julia confronts Barbie about his lies, but before he can explain himself, she falls unconscious. Alice assumes that the people might be suffering from meningitis, but they do not have spinal tap kits to confirm the suspicion. Jim hands Junior a gun to guard the hospital and stop anyone infected from coming outside. This is the only plausible way to stop the spread. After that, Barbie and Jim leave for the town's pharmacist to bring more medicines to the hospital. Angie wakes up when the water level rises up to her nose. She immediately tries to stop the flow, but the damage to the pipes is too big to be fixed by one person. In the hospital, Julia meets Phil who tells her that he was supposed to meet Peter in a cabin. The doctors stop her from talking to him further, but Julia won't calm down before she knows what her husband was doing in the cabin. A while later, Junior tells her that he found Barbie in a cabin the day they got into a fight. This makes Julia even more suspicious of him. She walks out of the hospital through the back door and drives away to look for the said place. In the meantime, Barbie and Jim walk into the pharmacist to see the place is in shambles. Someone came there before them and took away all the medicines. Jim suspects it was Lester and rushes to his home. Lester is burning the medicines in a furnace, claiming that God wants them all to die and they shouldn't resist it. The other two arrive and stop him before taking the medicines away. Linda is still in a critical condition in the hospital. An elderly woman gives up her medicine to save Linda's life since she is more important to the town. It causes the woman's death which makes Linda feel awful. Some minutes later, the patients start to protest. They want to go out, but Junior threatens them with a gun. Seeing them scared, he puts it down and makes them understand the severity of the situation. Eventually, the protesters calm down and agree to quarantine. By now, Julia reaches the cabin and looks around. She finds nothing related to Barbie, but a pile of paperwork catches her attention. It shows that her husband is in a lot of debt and they are about to go bankrupt. Julia is shocked, having never known about Peter's side hustles. Suddenly, she falls unconscious. Joe and Nori have realized that they got the last seizure after they touched each other. They set up a phone and touch each other once again. A few seconds later, they go into seizures and both say something about the pink stars falling in line. They get better in no time and check the video. The results are shocking, but they decide to keep it a secret from the elders. 
Barbie goes to the cabin to find an unconscious Julia on the floor. He immediately helps her and gets her to the hospital, even though she might have found out that he killed Peter. Linda tells Jim about the bravery Junior showed that day. Since she is low on deputies, she appoints him to the police force. When Julia wakes up, she asks Barbie about his relationship with Peter. It turns out Barbie works as an enforcer for a betting company. His job is to get money from the people who refuse to pay after losing. Peter lost a lot of money in a bet, hence Barbie was sent to get money from him. Julia is shocked to find out the truth, but Barbie doesn't tell her about his meeting with Peter. At night, Jim returns home to see Lester waiting for him. He has come to return the money they got from the propane import. It is then revealed that they were selling it to youngsters outside the town to create recreational medicines. They made a lot of money using their position, but now, at the time of emergency, Lester wants to let go of all of it. After he leaves, Jim hears bangings on the house's pipeline. He goes down to the bunker to finally see Angie chained to the bed. Angie begs him to let her free, but Jim doesn't listen, scared that his son will be convicted. The following morning, Lester returns to Jim. He claims to have heard the word Moab repeatedly, but Jim thinks it's his hearing aid malfunctioning. Lester has completely lost his mind and believes that he is a messenger of the dome. Joe and Nori are together when they see a large group of butterflies stuck to the other side of the dome. It is affecting the magnetic field of the atmosphere, attracting non-seasonal butterflies towards itself. When they clear up, many buses filled with civilians arrive outside Chester's Mill. They are the relatives of the people stuck inside coming to say hi as per the government's orders. Several people gather near the dome to meet their loved ones who they haven't talked to in a while. Linda also meets her fiance. Outside, the appearance of the dome has become international news. Several reporters are covering the emotional reunion of the separated people. Meanwhile, Lester continues telling people about Moab and how God is leading them to death. Jim tries to stop him, but Lester in turn wants him to confess his wrongdoings to the public. He gives Jim a day to come clean and threatens to reveal his crime if he doesn't. Julia meets her sister-in-law in the crowd who shows her a letter from Peter. In it, he apologizes to everyone for what he is about to do and says Julia deserves better. A devastated Julia assumes he has run away because of the debts. By the end of the day, the military clears up the visitors and starts moving away. Barbie uses his old badge to talk to a soldier and ask him what is going on. Even the guy doesn't know what the government plans to do, but they have been ordered to clear up the area as soon as possible and never think of returning. The news shocks Barbie and he tries thinking of a plausible explanation for the order. Then he remembers Lester talking about Moab and figures out it means mother of all bombs. The military plans to bomb Chester's mill to get rid of the dome. It is probably because the dome is altering the magnetic field and harming the life of the organisms outside. Today's visit of the civilians was also the last gift to the people of Chester's mill before their death. He tells Julia, Linda, and Jim about this and they all work to alert the people. Everyone is asked to gather at the underground tunnel which is their only hope for survival. Knowing that they are about to die anyway, Jim lets go of Angie. She runs to her house but cannot find her brother Joe. In one of the rooms, Junior is waiting for her with a gun. He tells her about the bomb and apologizes for everything he has done to her. After finding out they are going to die, Angie lovingly puts him on her lap and waits for the impact. In the tunnel, Alice and Carolyn panic because Nori is nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, Nori and Joe are outside still looking for Angie to alert her about the bomb. Joe is worried to death about his sister who hasn't returned home since the night the dome appeared. At exactly 1.15, the missile is launched. Joe and Nori see it and lock lips for the last kiss before their deaths. But to their luck, the dome stops the missile and protects the entire town and its people. Jim runs to the border to see the areas outside of the dome have been completely destroyed, but the bomb didn't cause a single dent to it. He is joined by Lester who still wants him to come clean to the public. Since no one is around, Jim takes the opportunity to stick Lester's hearing aid to the dome which causes it to explode and kills him instantly. 
Soon, everyone comes to the borders to witness the damage caused by the bomb. Angie is still with Junior in her room. She assumes he is going to lock her again and attacks him before he makes the first move. He chases her outside but eventually loses her. Somewhere else, a car crash causes the water tank to explode, which further wastes their supply of water. The crash is caused because of Alice, who is low on insulin and is hallucinating. The radio tower stops picking up signals and only plays a strange tune. All the police walkies in the town also do the same. Dodie constructs a special device and finds out a particular frequency is blocking all others, and the signal is coming from inside the dome. She and Julia set off to look for it. The town gets its water supply from a lake inside the dome, so the people are not worried about running out of it. However, Linda and Barbie discover that the lake is filled with methane because of a pipeline that the dome broke. The water is poisonous and they have no way to filter it. The town also gets a hint of this and people start gathering outside the convenience store asking for water. The store owner doesn't accept money since it is of no use in the time of emergency. People are about to start a riot when Linda arrives and calms them down, but it is clear that they are about to lose their minds soon. Junior is looking for Angie when Linda finds him and calls him to the convenience store. She appoints him to manage the people and any conflicts that arise throughout the day. In the hospital, Alice is on the verge of death and desperately needs insulin to survive. Nori takes it upon herself to steal a dosage of insulin from other people in the town. Joe follows her behind and ends up in an empty house. As they try to break in, a man points his gun at them and reveals that he took his last shot yesterday. Then they break into the next house and find several batches of the medicine in the fridge. However, a kid stops them and reveals that he is the diabetic one who needs the medicine. Nori cannot get herself to steal the medicine from the little boy, but Joe takes a single dosage for Alice. Angie ends up in Rose's diner and tells Rose everything Junior did to her. As Rose tries to calm her down, two thugs enter the diner to rob it. When the girls retaliate, the guys strike Rose and kill her. Angie puts up a strong fight, but she is knocked out in the end. By now, people have started a riot outside the convenience store. Many of them steal food and water and fight in the streets. The police try their best to stop the commotion but are outnumbered by the people. Angie and Joe are on their way back to the hospital when Julia and Dodie approach them. They register that the signal that is blocking the radio frequencies is somehow coming from the couple. Joe tells them about the seizures they have been getting which also started when the dome appeared. It is clear that Joe and Angie have some kind of connection to the dome, but they are unsure what. Barbie enters the diner to see a guy stealing supplies. He holds him down before rescuing Angie. Outside, Linda brings out her gun to stop the riot, but before she shoots anyone, it starts to rain. The people stop fighting, relieved that they won't die of starvation anytime soon. Barbie hands an unconscious Angie to Jim, unaware of his intentions. Jim says he is taking her to the hospital but brings her to his home instead. In the meantime, Julia and the group are on the border. When Angie and Joe touch the dome together, the blockage of the frequency stops. This further proves their connection to the dome. When it gets dark, Julia and Barbie meet in front of her house. They hug, tired of everything that happened today. Julia has started to develop feelings for the person who killed her husband. Angie wakes up in Jim's house and asks him what she is doing there. Jim promises to let her go after she listens to what he has to say. He wants her to not tell anyone about her abduction and in turn, he will do everything to protect her when the people go wild. A girl like Angie with her brother cannot survive on her own, so it is in her best interest to take the offer. But before she does so, Junia arrives home and the episode ends. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.